What does Scale do today? How would you describe it? Yeah. So today, Scale provides products and infrastructure to support uh, every company being able to do AI and machine learning. And so we work with many, many large enterprises. We work with the government very closely. Uh, and it's all around taking this sort of black magic technology of artificial intelligence and making it very, very practically useful across a wide variety of verticals. So I mentioned our, our original work in autonomous vehicles and automotive. You know, there we work with companies like General Motors or Toyota mm -hmm. um, and, and many of the largest automakers in the world. You know, in our, in our work with um, the government, uh, we work particularly on national security problems. I can talk about a bit about this uh, later, but I, I think it's absolutely critical that we have in the United States access to the best AI technology for national security. And so some of the things that we've worked on there are um, around geospatial intelligence and utilizing um, all the imagery that we have to basically enable a, a greater uh, national security. So one of the things we did in Ukraine, for example, is we built algorithms that could detect damage in civilian structures uh, mm -hmm. across all the cities in Ukraine. So we did this across um, Kiev and Kharkiv, Dnipro, Mariupol, all the major cities. Uh, and there's algorithms that can detect real time when there's damage on very civilian structures. And you use that to coordinate humanitarian mm -hmm. response and sort of um, defense responses. Um, so, yeah, so that's cool. We recently had Palmer Lucky on the podcast. And, you know, this is something we talked about. And I think there's kind of this theme of, you know, how does technology, how does the technology industry work with government? And we talked about maybe there's a change in opinion. Like when he started uh, Angel, it was not popular. In fact, there were like protests inside Google uh, about like Google working with the government. Now, of course, this year, you know, with what's been happening in Ukraine, I think that tone has shifted. Hmm. Kind of curious to get your take on the state of AI in national defense and what do you think the tech industry should do when it comes to working with the folks in DC and the Pentagon? Yeah. Well, so I think the first thing to just acknowledge is that the, the tech stack for defense has totally changed or, mm. or needs to totally change. You know, if you, if you think about um, a lot of what the United States has been investing in from a national security perspective, it's a lot of like basically giant hardware systems. It's more um, F-35s and fire planes or more aircraft carriers and more submarines and, you know, all these like giant pieces of, of infrastructure, which are, you know, maybe would have been important 50 years ago. But now you look at what's happening in Ukraine and it's all about drones. It's all about greater, better intelligence, which is mostly mm -hmm. digital. It's like mm -hmm. cyber cyber uh, security and and uh, and being able to use different signals to to get better intelligence. It's all about um, missiles uh, and missile defense. And and you know you can even see it like the the tanks that the Russians had were basically useless um, in mm -hmm. in a lot of the conflict. And so the, there's sort of this um, we're at this moment. It's a really really important moment. And I think I agree with 100 percent with with Palmer that um, we're at this moment where the whole tech stack needs to change. And it's so critical that, you know, there's technology experts and that the tech community on the whole realizes that this is this is what's happening and that, you know, the wars of the next 50 years are going to be fought on totally new tech platforms that in the United States really have not been built yet. So it's a it's a massive moment to build. And I know that, you know, and and um, and I think that there's a bunch of technologies that become really important. Autonomous systems are really important. Drones are really important. Um, and AI is a critical technology that underpins, you know, many of these components. AI can be used for cyber warfare and cybersecurity. AI can be used for disinformation. AI can be used for um, better drone and drone autonomy. AI can be used in, in all these different use cases that are critical for the next um, the next generation of conflict. And, right. and you know, not to like belabor the, the sort of point, I think at this point, many of us are tired of hearing about U.S. versus China, but you know the reason this all matters is if you think about if you think about what happened after the atomic bomb in the nineteen after World War II, you know um, the fact that the United States was the clear superpower in the world created mm -hmm. you know decades and decades of peace that were virtually unprecedented. If you look at the history of humanity before the sort of past you know uh, call it eighty years or hundred years, it's defined by war. And so mm -hmm. the, the the fact that the United States had the best technology and was a superpower has been critical to this period where, you know, frankly, there's been so much progress in humanity and and these huge economies have developed. And we're in this we're in this incredible period of 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 great innovation. 
But all of that can go away if we don't have, you know, if we don't have the level of security that we have today. And so it's it's one of these things that it's hard to feel on a micro level, which is one of the yeah. reasons why I think it's it feels very intangible to most yeah. people. But definitely, if we end up in a in a regime where, let's say, you know, God forbid, China has overtaken the United States and China yeah. has built that tech stack more quickly and more efficaciously than than we have in America, then we have a lot of very big problems. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, The Good Time Show by Arthi and Shriram.